Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. You're going to have to uh, forgive me. We're going to go to the book of Genesis chapter 8. Uh, the wind is up here. And I, some of you are asking, why was the umbrella put up? but it's not spread out. Well, for one thing, where the sun was, it, was gonna, it wasn't going to stop my eyes from being bright sunlight anyway. Now the sun's down, and the wind blew the other one down and bent it. The only reason this is up here is your pastor had uh, Brother Caleb put it up here. Just in case I stepped back, I'd have, I could feel the umbrella, and I wouldn't go over the side. So... Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, Caleb, and everybody else. Okay. We're going to go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter number 8. My remarks are not going to be nearly as long as usual and shorter than usual by a good bit. But I do think, I feel that what I have to say tonight, not because I'm saying it by no stretch, but because the Bible says it. And here, several weeks ago, several weeks ago, the scriptures begin to just come out to me. Every time I saw it, I'd underline it. A phrase, a phrase. And that's what I want to bring to you tonight. So in Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20. I shouldn't do this. Everybody that's got Genesis 8.20, give a short honk. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I just wanted to make sure you got it. Genesis 8.20. That's okay. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, touch our hearts, our souls, our minds, and our spirits. Quicken us, God, through your word, and let us stay quickened, stay alive to your word. Let this word have free course down in us, profoundly and deeply God do it let it have beautiful beautiful glorious free course in our lives and in our world in Jesus name amen now you might want to keep your Bibles open there because I'm coming back to that but the picture is that uh, Noah is now getting off of the ark Many of you are familiar. We don't have to rehearse it in depth. But the world that God made that he said was good, 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 and then at the end was very good. And when God says something is good, it's good. And when God said something is very good, you can rest assured it's very good. So if God is pleased with it, then you can only imagine how pleased we would be with it if we were there in that world at that time and place, especially in the Garden of Eden. We know the fall of Adam and Eve. We know the slide, sliding progression of man into a downward spiral until we come to the place that the world is so full of violence wickedness, uh, debauchery, that now it's so bad that God is sorry that he even made it. So for God to come to the place of saying it's good, yea, very good, to the place he's now so horridly, brokenly astounded over what it's become, 
the inhabitants of this earth and the degradations that are going on daily, that he's sorry he ever made it. It must have been very, very bad. We can only imagine the angels of God that shouted for joy, the book of Job tells us, when he spread forth the heavens and created the earth, and they were there clapping their hands. As we watch as the clapping, and then the incident in the garden, sacrifices, failures, generations, after generations being born, 930 years of them just from Adam and Eve alone, let alone all their children's 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 children that are having kids. I read of a Russian woman in the 20th century that had one woman. Amen. She had two husbands. She had many triplets, and she had, she had um, uh, twins. I think she had one set of four kids, but one woman. Russian woman in two marriages produced 67 children, literally. And the Russian army gave her a medal. Can you imagine if that woman would have lived 900 years? How many children she would have had? So while all these sons and daughters and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and on and on and on down through the century after century, are having children upon children upon children, and yet they're walking away from God wholesale until it finally gets to the place that God is sorry he made it. I can see the angels clapping, slowing their clapping, lowering their arms, and hiding their faces over a world gone so bad. But one man, Noah, found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Is anybody happy that you found grace and grace found you? Thank God. Because we're in a world that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. And the descriptions that he gives are our world today. And you may notice in the book of Daniel, when it speaks of the rise of the Antichrist, one of the things that opens the final door for the Antichrist entry, it says, and when the transgressors are come to the full, here comes the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, we're living in a world, we're watching the transgressions and transgressors come to the full. So no telling what is all going to be seen. Be that as it may, Noah found grace, was told to build the ark. His three sons, their wives, three of them, his wife, eight souls entered the ark. They were there more than a year. Eight souls got off the ark. None of the women were with child. And a new world was started. Now he is offering clean beast, clean fowl, burnt offerings on the altar, verse 20 of Genesis 8. Now I want you to notice with me verse 21. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and said in his heart, the Lord said in his heart, this is huge, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. That's because a sacrifice was offered up and it created a sweet savor to God. Now we know that this is the smell, the sweet savor speaks of aroma. And we know that God is a spirit, but we're made in the image of God. That's why we have sight, hearing, touch, feel, taste, etc. And And so we can smell. The sense of smell 
is the only sense that we possess that when we smell something, it instantly goes back to the memory bank. Smell does that. When I smell fresh cut green grass, instantly I go back to my senior year. It's a short time. I was on the football team. I'm certainly not bragging. I got kicked off before the season was over. Uh, but I, I, I had two scholarships, two football scholarships headed my way uh, in spite of me getting kicked off the team and playing just in my senior year. But um, uh, the drug, I got arrested for drugs and I took care of that. But I remember doing push-ups. So our, our, our coach was a, he was a, he was a slave driver. I'm telling you, the guy was, he was cruel as a grave. And the fresh cut grass and smelling that grass, whenever to this day I smell fresh cut grass, I go back instantly to that moment. Because, and I found out years later, smell does that. Well, God ordained that. And the, the term sweet savor, when he smelled that, he said, nevermore. Will I destroy the earth like that, like I have done? While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. Amen. But he said it after the sweet savor was smelled. That was not the last time that God smelled the sweet savor. Forty-three times the term sweet savor is found in Scripture. 42 of those times are in the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, as you will well remember, was the sacrifices being made and offered up in the tabernacle plan, in this case, Noah at the beginning. The next time we see it is in Exodus 29:18 or another time, and thou shalt burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. It is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. In Leviticus 3, 5, it says, and Aaron's sons shall burn it on the altar upon the burnt sacrifice, which is upon the wood that is on the fire, it is an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. Amen. In Ezekiel 20, 40 and 41, I'm going to run through here, but in my holy mountain, in the mountain at the height of Israel, saith the Lord, there shall be the house of Israel. All of them in the land shall serve me. There I will accept them. There I will require your offerings, the first fruits of your oblations. Verse 41 and I will accept you with your sweet savor. When I bring you out from the countries and gather you out of the countries wherein you have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. But as this is done, he's saying you're going to bring your offerings and it will come up as a sweet savor. Now, we have... Some real cooks in this church. And uh, there's some guys in this church that what you can do with uh, barbecue pits is nothing less than amazing. And there's something about it, and we can all relate to this, when somebody's cooking, say, ribs or tri-tip or steaks or something, or even hamburgers, and they've got it seasoned and they've got, I hope nobody's fasting, and they got, they got, maybe they're using oak wood or certain good hickory charcoal, and, and it gets to a certain point, and that first smell, that smoke hits you, that waft of, oh my goodness. I mean, your knees almost get weak. It just, you just smell that. And it's like, and your, 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 your juices get to rolling in your mouth, and, and it's like, how much longer? 
how much longer? And then, then they bring off the steak or whatever it is they're cooking, and you can't wait to sink your teeth in it. Well, this is spiritually what God got out of the offerings that were offered up to God, the sacrifices, amen, the, the firstborn lamb, amen, the he-goat, the rams, the bullocks, things of that nature that were offered up to God. Forty-two times it was a sweet savor, a sweet savor, and God would smell it, God would feel it, God, everything that went into it was acceptable up to God and he would forgive sin. He would, he, would, he would actually roll it ahead until where the final forgiveness sacrifice would be made. And, and, and this happened week after week, day after day, month after month, year after year, decade, century after century. Amen. This took place. Now, I want you to think with me just a moment. How many and how much time went into every sacrifice that was offered. Let's say it was a lamb or a he goat, a male, or a ram, uh, a bullock. Think about the time that that lamb was in its mother's womb, if you please. The birth of it. The growing of it. How long did it take to get to the place it was picked. And then when it was picked to be offered up as the sacrifice, then it would have to be slain. And then as it is slain, they would work the portions and the parts of the sacrifice. They would have to build the fire or have the fire continually burning. They would take it to the to the altar, especially when the tabernacle plan was instituted, and then the temple for the centuries after centuries after centuries that it was offered there. And, and so here then finally it would be placed upon the brazen altar, and the fires would be coming up, the heat. And how long would it take before the first waft sense of smell of that would begin to rise up into God's, as it were, anthropomorphically, his nostrils. How long? It took a long time. There was no button you pushed. It wasn't, this wasn't a microwave operation. There took time. It took sacrifice. And, and there was a process. And then when everything got just right, the fragrance, the smell, the sweet savor, and God would, as it were, smell it, and he would roll the sins ahead. How long would it take if it was a burnt offering to offer that sacrifice to where it was completely burnt? It all took time. And all of these sacrifices, as we know, were just rolling them ahead, sacrifice to sacrifice, year to year, until there would come the supreme sacrifice. All of the Old Testament sacrifices and all of the times of the sweet savor was just headed to a place called Calvary. Because at Calvary, there would be a lamb offered that was slain in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. And so that began with Adam. And he told Eve, there's one coming from you that will eventually bruise the serpent's head and his heel will be bruised in the process. That went on for 4,000 years down through the lineage, down through the lineage, down, 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 finally to Abraham and then to Isaac, and then to Jacob, and then to Judah, and then down, down, down to the house of Boaz, to the house of Obed, to the house of Jesse, to the house of David. And then on down, through Nathan's descendants, 
down, 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 to where a virgin by the name of Mary would finally be overshadowed by the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And something would begin to be formed in her womb. And it would take nine more months for that baby to be born. And when the old prophet saw it, when Simeon said, there he is. That's the Messiah. I can die in peace. But it was 33 and a half years later. Amen. He'd been teaching for three and a half years. His ministry, we talked a while back about the last week, the last supper. He's closing in on the sacrifice, Gethsemane, the prayer, the arrest, the high priest, the sham trial, Pilate, Herod's beatings, the cross on his back, going to Golgotha, being nailed, suspended, six hours, hanging between heaven and earth. And think with me, brothers and sisters. There he is in that ignominious moment. And I've said it a while back, it is the focal point of all human history. But everything in human history was leading, moving towards this moment. And as he would say, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost. The sweetest savor that God ever received and that he paid for himself through the agony he endured through the flesh in which he robed himself and manifested himself. It came up as a sweet savor. And God so loved that savor. That's why we're here tonight because of that sweet savor. It wasn't a microwave job. It wasn't push the button. It took a long time. But it came up as a sweet, sweet savor. Now there's one other time in the Bible where we find the word sweet savor. I'm going to read it to you. It's in the New Testament again. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14, and we'll read on through 16. Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ. Listen closely. And maketh manifest the savor, the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. For we, everybody say we, everybody say me, everybody say us, we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ. I made mention earlier, I'm looking at some of the most beautiful people in the world. Actually, I'm looking at your cars <laughs> and, and your headlights, but I know you're there. You're some of the sweetest people in the world. I'll tell you how special you are to God. You're a sweet savor to him. Your worship, your prayer, and we're coming back to this. What was taking place in these cars this morning? Worshiping God, speaking in tongues, weeping, crying, children praying, talking in tongues. You know what that is? That's a sweet savor unto God. Do you have any idea what that means to him? As your pastor said, his name's been defamed, used as a curse word, the backside of filthy jokes all week long. And it's happening around us even as we speak. That's why his church is so special. We praise his name. We love his name. We adore his name. And he says, you are a sweet savor to me. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we're a savor also in them that saved and them that perish. 
To some, I'm going to paraphrase, to the one, we're the savor of death unto death. To the other, the savor of life unto life, who is sufficient for these things. Let me read this to you from Taylor. But thanks be to God, for through what Christ has done, he has triumphed over us so that now, wherever we go, he uses us to tell others about the Lord and to spread the gospel like a sweet perfume. As far as God is concerned, there is a sweet, wholesome fragrance in our lives. It is the fragrance of Christ within us, an aroma to both the saved and the unsaved all around us. To those who are not being saved, we seem a fearful smell of death and doom. Well, to those who know Christ, we are a life-giving perfume. But who is adequate for such a task as this? Now, brothers and sisters, I'm really fixing to close in on this message. And I'm going to get to the point I really feel strong in my heart. Amen. How long did it take to produce a truly sweet savor? When an individual repents, is baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, the sweet savor starts immediately. But think with me. For a child of God to grow in grace and knowledge, to learn about what makes Jesus happy and what doesn't make him happy, to get the word of God down in us so that we are epistles known and read of all men. How long does it take to be a really great child of God, saint of God, woman of God, man of God, teenager for the Lord? It takes a long time to be really a sweet, sweet savor in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. But I want you to notice this in Acts 10. This is interesting. Verse 1, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, one that feared God with all his house, gave much alms to the people, prayed to God always. He saw in a vision about 12 o'clock in the day, an angel of God coming saying, Cornelius. And he looked and he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? He said, thy prayers and thine alms are come up, not as a sweet savor, but for a memorial before the Lord. This man was not yet born again of the water and the spirit, but his prayers and his offerings were coming up as a memorial to God. And God said, I'm enjoying this so much, but I want it to be a sweet savor. So you send men down to Joppa. You get a hold of a man by the name of Simon Peter. He's going to come and bring you some good news. And when you get that good news, you're going to receive the Holy Ghost, which he did. We know this. I'm interpolating. When Peter, while he was yet preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had gathered in his house. They began to speak with other tongues. And then Peter commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what you suppose? You think he got out of the praying business? No, 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 no. You think he got out of the giving business? No, he was just getting started. Now this man, his whole life, and here we are 2,000 years later talking about Cornelius and the sweet savor, if you please, that he is. Now, musicians, I want you to pray. I mean to play, I'll pray. Brothers and sisters, here's my whole point. How long does it take to get into a really good prayer meeting? How long does it take to really sink your teeth to where it's just you and Jesus? I'm going to tell you the way it works with me. And it's been this way for you. Sometimes, we all know, 
you can start praying and boom, it's there instantly. We know that. It usually takes me about 20 minutes to where, as far as I'm concerned, it's going up like a sweet savor. It's just me and him. I'm talking to him. I'm feeling him. This is why in Psalm 141, verse 2, this is a praying church, but listen to me. I feel like the Lord wants to talk to us. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Do you realize what a blessing and what an honor it is to pray to him? to lift our hands to him. He said, accept it, Lord, like incense. Let it be like the evening sacrifice to where you could smell the sweet savor. One paraphrase puts it this way. Let my prayer be accepted as sweet-smelling incense in your presence. Let the lifting up of my hands in prayer be accepted as an evening sacrifice. Brothers and sisters, I know you got a roof over your head and you can't reach your hands the way you like, but what do you say we lift our hands? Some of you, you may want to open your window if it ain't already open and put one at least one hand out the window. Let's talk to him. Our God's in this place. Lord, you see your people. Lord Jesus, receive our prayer. Receive our worship. Receive it as an adoration. God, you've got this people in this end of the Inland Empire. God, we want you to know that we love you. We want you to know that we praise you. We want you to receive our prayer. We want you to receive our worship, God, as an evening sacrifice. Oh, God, as a sweet fragrance to you, God. Oh, that's it. Let's pray. Let's sing. Sing, folks. Oh, that's it. Come on. Oh, yes, yes, yes. God, I surrender. I surrender. Oh, yes. Withholding nothing. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, that's it. Let your praise be lifted as incense. With the lifting of your hands as the evening sacrifice. 
Come on, that's a sweet With savor unto the Lord. Nothing. That's a sweet With smell, a sweet nothing. aroma, a sweet incense unto the Lord. With all oh, oh, hallelujah. With all Aroma unto the Lord. 